Hello? Okay, so we can start? Okay, so welcome. So my name is uh, Nathalie Colo. I am come from, uh, I'm from uh, ST Microelectronics and I come from uh, South of France. So today we will uh, discuss uh, concerning uh, certification in uh, automotive application. So I will present what is uh, the different certifications that we will find in the car, inside the cars, following the different um, applications that we can have. Uh, so we will see that all together. So I think in, in the room, everybody has a car, so you know what we will spoke about. And you will see what security will be inside the schematic of the certification. So let's start. Let's go. Okay, so, so the first thing is that today we have more and more millions of codes inside a car. So I, we, you can see that, for example, helicopters has only 10 million lines of codes. And today, for a car, you've got 100 million. So 10 times more lines of codes. So what does it mean for you? It means that, in fact, you will have more possibility to be hacked with a car. So it means that it will give some vulnerability inside the car. So more you will have software, and more you will have this type of um, codes that will be increasing the complexity of your car, you will see that it will grow also the vulnerability inside the car. So what we see here in this graph, so you see the car that is uh, growing, and so what we see also is that the software is driving the mobility sector. So it means that for the cars, it becomes more and more like a mobile phone with some wheels, in fact. So you see today inside your car, you, you can put your mobile phone and uh, you can uh, ask, uh, hello Siri, uh, call mom, hello Siri, ask things. Okay, so it becomes more and more like a mobile phone. Okay, so what we see also is it's really the beginning of the increased uh, code complexity. Uh, in 2030, we will increase about three times the factor of these million units of code inside the car. Okay, and so all that will also increase cybersecurity issue. Okay, ju just a few dates just to show you that cybersecurity is quite a new word that we see today in the, in the car, and uh, so in automotive world. More and more, we are speaking about security, but cybersecurity. So just a few things. So in uh, 2015, this is the first known cyber hacking incident uh, that has been done by a journalist. Uh, so it was a volunteer attack uh, done by someone, and it is the first one that has been registered. And from this time, you can see that in 2018, so it's, it's really it's yesterday, it's yesterday, we just start to make some uh, statistics concerning cyber attacks. We just start to do this type of statistics. And in 2021, we start to see that we increase the cybersecurity attacks about 225%. So only between the differences 18 and 21, we increase about 225. So it's so huge even on this small time. So you see that more and more we arrive in the future, more and more we have to think about security in automotive market. To think about that, we have done some risk analysis for automotive application. You know that there is lots of different uh, applications. So car makers and tier one, you need some solution to prevent this risk. Okay, so what type of risk you are mainly concerned by our car makers and our tier ones? So it's mainly service and network access corruption, like we can see. So it means that you can have some corruption uh, from the network of the car if it is connected to the cloud, for example, with infotainment. Um, the other thing is the device cloning or counterfeiting. What it means, it means, for example, if your cars, you have some 
yeah, some light on your cars, and some this light is coming from car makers, and it is dedicated to this type of cars. So you have to authenticate this type of light to be sure that it will be put inside the correct car. So you can have some device of the car that can be cloned. Okay, so we need to take care about this type of risk. You have some data corruption. As I said and I already explained, million, million of codes are inside the car. So remember my first slide, I said that there is so much, so huge codes that you can be corrupted. So you need to take care about all these traits. Okay, and all these traits create vulnerabilities. One important thing is that cars become more and more connected. So just here, I wanted to show you the main technology that is today uh, present in our car. So you have the infotainment inside of your car. You know, the, the nice display when you drive and you can select with the, the new destination with the GPS inside um, or the music also. Car access. So you know with your mobile phone, okay, you can open the door of your car with your mobile phone now. You have EV charging. So for some of you who have an uh, electrical car, okay, so you, you can go directly now to, to the EV charging station, plug your car, and now there is a plug and charge. So you just do nothing and you can, you can have the transaction connection between the cloud and, uh, the, and uh, the car and pay without doing nothing. So this is a plug and charge and EV charging. Wireless device charging. So I think some of you, if you have new cars, you can have your phone and the phone, you can find it in the middle of your car and it will charge. Okay, so this is the wireless device charging, what is also called Qi charging, if you know, the, if you know this, uh, this name. We have the over the air update. So it means that you will have to update your software. You know, like I said at the beginning, more and more lines of software and codes is available inside the car. So you have also to do some over the air update. We have some telematics, okay, to take care about your speed, uh, about uh, how you manage uh, and how you drive. V2V, V2I connectivity, so it's really new. It's uh, between uh, vehicle to vehicle or vehicle to infrastructure. So what it means is that, for example, your vehicle will be able to detect uh, if, the, if the fire is green or, or red to, to inform you or to inform you about the speed uh, in the road. And the ADAS. So maybe in the future we won't have to drive anymore. Just uh, ask... Uh, go back home, and then he, he will bring us home. So just to show you that all these features is concerning the connectivity services that you can find inside the car. And this connectivity, you already use it nearly every day. If you take your car to go to work, if you bring your children to, to the school. So you use these services uh, around the car. OK. so. I spoke uh, a lot about uh, different connected security. I speak a lot about uh, cyber attack. Um, I spoke about uh, all, everything around the car and inside the car. And now we have, after the cyber attack, we've got the cyber security. Okay, so the cyber security is here to answer what we saw before, the trades that we saw in the, in the last slide. And it also to answer to different things. So the integrity, okay? So root of trust, you want to be sure that from one element to the other one, it's a real one, okay? So platform integrity, so when you will integrate, for example, a, a module inside the car, you want to be sure that this module is trustable, okay? You want to have your phone charged in a secure way. You don't want to have any trouble or lose your phone because you put your phone on the car and it will be break because it's not the correct power that has been supplied to your phone. You don't want that. So 
you have to take care about the integrity, the root of trust of what you have inside the core. The confidentiality, okay, so secure, co uh, secure communication, secure storage. So today, with the infotainment, you have more and more relation with your, with your car, like your mobile phone, so you can enter some personal data, so you need to take care also of that. So car makers need to take care about of that. And of course, authenticity, genuine device. So just remember, I spoke also concerning the light of the car. So if a big car maker wants to be sure that the light will be put in this car is the correct one, you have to trust it. You have to trust the light. So you have to authentify it. And for that, you have the genuine device to be sure that the device that we will put inside the car is the correct one. Okay, so all this, so it's really three big points, integrity, confidentiality, and authenticity. So this is what you need to take care when we want to speak about cybersecurity. Okay, so why choose certified solution for cybersecurity? Okay, you, you will tell me, okay, it's nice, we know that car is becoming more and more mobile phone. We, we know all this stuff. We know that there is some attacks, some cyber attacks. We know that you can have some security. Okay, but why I will choose certificate, certified product? So I've got the answer for you, so that's the good news. So certified products are evaluated by third-party laboratories. So what it means? It means that when we will provide security, so when we will provide a secure solution to authentify the light, when we will provide a secure solution to be sure that your um, supply, the chi charging supply will be trustable and you will be able to, to charge your phone at the correct things, when we provide this component to the car makers, to the tier ones, we will provide also sorry, certification related to our product or to the products. So you have different types of certification. But when you certify a secure product, you will certify it with a laboratory. So there is a third party that will say, OK, your chip is is very high level of security and is able to be trustable and it is able to do the authentication of a light or of everything inside the car. So what you need to take care and why you choose certified is to be sure that you will keep the security. Okay, you will keep the security of your car. So you will be sure that everything will be secure. You want to keep quality and reliability. Okay, to be sure that your car or component of your car or platform inside the car will be with good quality and reliable. And interoperability, sorry for this one. So all these three is why you will choose certified product, okay, for cybersecurity. And Okay, so you, you decide to choose uh, because you're, you're tier one or this is security that is interesting you. You, you will choose to, to, and you will decide to have a, a certified product to integrate to your platform. So at, at, at which state I will, um, I will add this security? Okay, it's really at the beginning. You need to think about security at the beginning. You cannot develop anything without seeking security. So each time you will have a cycle, which is called this V cycle, okay? So you will start with requirements. It can come from car makers, tier ones, or anybody. But you will have to think about cybersecurity during the whole cycle of your product, or your development, or your hardware, or software development. Okay, so all the platforms that you have, and all the step requirements, System design, component design, hardware or software development following what you want to do. Unit testing, integration testing, system testing. So it's not only requirement, you need to think also about the test part to be sure that you integrate correctly and you did the right things. 
So cyber security needs to be think from the beginning to the end. And if you do that, you will have the vehicle integration secure till the beginning. All your system architecture and integration will be also secure, and component integration will be secure. So it means that all your system you will develop for automotive or for automotive platform or for automotive market, you will be sure that you will follow the trend of cybersecurity. One thing is that what type of certification I can find in the automotive market? Okay, so there is many different type of certification. So I just have put few of them. Uh, but I'm free to, to discuss about others. So we have the ISO, so it's one uh, well-known. It's mainly in the industry market, but it's also present for automotive. So ISO, International Organization for Standardization. So you have to, some standard to follow to be sure that you will integrate a correct uh, secure element, for example. So if you have a, a certification with ISO, so you will follow a standard that will refer to all the processes that is defined by the ISO. We mainly found the ISO in industrial market, but today it's also present in the automotive market. Because automotive market is coming a little bit in the other way with mobile, industrial, uh, IoT, okay, so all that part we can see certification coming from other world in the automotive market. We have common criteria. So this is a, maybe a most known certification for security product and system. Okay, so this common criteria, it's a third party laboratory that will validate that you have followed the process of security to develop your product. We have, we have also the CZIP. Okay, so CZIP is mainly IoT. But like I said at the beginning, IoT is also coming inside the car market mode. So it's interesting to see that some in the car market, some secure products are also CZIP, or some products are already certified CZIP. And another one, which is also a FIPS, so Federal Information Processing Standard. So this one, is more for computer. And you will tell me, okay, so it's computer system, but what I said at the beginning, the first slide, is that we have more and more software lines, more and more complexity, more and more codes that is available today inside the car. Like you saw PC, it was, what, three times less codes than inside the car. So that's why we see also this type of uh, certification in automotive market. FIPS is mainly for American market, US market. All these certifications have some level, okay? So you have different type of level. You can compare them because mainly each of them have the nearly same process, but they have different level that following your needs, following what you want to have as type of security, following what you want to secure because it's important to think what I need to secure. And it is the choice of the car maker to decide what he wants to secure or not secure. Is there interest to secure in a, a big uh, box uh, with a very high wall and uh, very costly uh, things? I don't know, uh, a PC. Is there really interest to, to, to have a strong box for that? Maybe not, maybe yes. It depends maybe the data inside. If the data is only documentation that you have done in university, I think uh, you can leave it on your desk uh, and keep the door open. Maybe there is no big interest. But if you have sensitive information inside your computer, it's very important to be taking care about this computer and put it in a safe place. So you have to take care about what level of security and what you want to secure. So this is the main thing. So remember, we saw the V-cycle from requirement to, to the end, to the testing. So 
when you have a requirement for security or, or for um, for um, application, you will have to think about what I want to secure, and it is your choice. You choose what you want to to secure, and all these standards are here, in fact, to help you to choose. They have some level, and they say, okay, I will secure that or that. Okay, so your PC, you have data which is not so big, not, not very good information inside, so okay, keep, keep a small one, small level is enough. Oh, you have very interesting data. Oh, you need to keep the, the highest level of security. So all this standard helps you to choose. If I come back to ST, um, okay, so it's my company, it's where I work. Uh, so we are present in the security market with the smart cards in 1984. So we well know the security market. Uh, we have done the first MCU based on a smart card uh, for banking application. So you know banking application is quite touchy. You, you won't leave your credit card uh, like that uh, on the desk and uh, leave it without uh, any verification or security but with your eyes to, to be sure that we won't stole your credit card. Okay, so you need to take care about that. So we have some solution for a banking solution. Following this, with our knowledge, we have started to work with consumer goods. Okay, so the same. For consumer goods also, you have different level of security that need to be provided following what you want to protect. And in the same way, we are proposing and we start to, to work on the security with cryptography library, cryptography public key, which is available in our product. Then we have start with contactless product and we have done the EL6 plus common criteria certification. Remember my last slide with common criteria? Common criteria is really dedicated certification for product, uh, secure product. So we start to have the first highest level. So E6 plus is the most. You can have more. Okay, so it's the highest level that you can have for security. Then after, we start with the banking, the ID, and the automotive. So automotive market, we are also present with our secure element. And today, today we are thinking about the future because security do not stop here when I, when I spoke to you, it continues to progress. And then we need to think about the future, what we have to the future. So we start to think about post-quantum cryptography, secure provisioning, and secure enclave. Okay, so these words, you can start to, to think about that, or maybe it makes sense uh, for you. But yeah, this is our future. So a few things, um, how we approach our secure product. So first of all, it's expertise. So we win in knowledge and in cryptography and IP architecture. So we have a full set uh, of designers that is working on this type of thing. We have also in-house technology. Okay, so it's important to know that our product has done in ST manufacture. We have a community. So it means we have people all around uh, the world and in a different uh, automotive area that is working uh, with strong investment uh, on security commu community. We have, of course, certified product, okay? So mainly with common criteria because it's the beginning of the secure product. So it's a state of the art of hardware and software certification. So it's not only one, but it's two. You need to think about the hardware and the software. And the environment, of course, because we have our own industry and we take care about the environment. Okay, so if I need to come back to security, I spoke about certification, uh, I spoke about cyber attack, cyber security. We have many three pillars to consider. Okay, so you, you will have just to think about three things. Okay, the first one, the secure design, so it's, a, in fact, is what is my vulnerability, how my product can be vulnerable in the market. Okay, so that this is an analysis, and you have uh, SQL, 
uh, on the AVAVAN, okay, for vulnerability treats. And then uh, the AVAVAN will give you the level of vulnerability, uh, what you can go and what you can protect. As I said, all certification has different levels. Okay, and Avavan is part of the certification and it will, with the number uh, of the Avavan, so the highest level is five, so it means that you will have the highest level of security against vulnerability risk. And after that, so this is really the main important. The second one, which is quite also important, is the methodology. So you need to think about the methodology. It's five also, so you have ADV and ATE, so it's just the names that you can find on the certification of common criteria or CZIP, for example. And then you have also on this one to consider the methodology, to, to be sure that your product is, is well done, okay? simply well done in the good process, in the good manner. Then we have site security. So what it means? Okay, it's good to have all this type of security. Okay, we, we, are, we have security again, vulnerability, again, methodology, but we have no place where when we do our product uh, is not secure. No, you need to take care about the site security. Okay, because when you will put some keys to be sure that this keys is secure, you need to be sure that the environment around where you will put that inside your chip cannot be corrupted. That there were not someone that will just enter in the room and will just change the code or, or keep all the code. So you need also to take care about seat security. Okay, so it's a full set. So really it's a three pillar of evalu security evaluation which help you following the level to understand where your, produ where your product stand. Just to help you to understand, I want to, to show you an example. Uh, but before that, you see here all the different schemes following common criteria and CZIP and with vulnerability analysis. So I, I say to you that Avavan 5 is the highest level. So it will be the same level as Avavan 5, it will be CZIP 5, and you will have to be minimum CCEL 4 plus to be able to attend Avavan 5. And in the other way, the basic vulnerability, so it means your product is quite vulnerable, will be one, okay, and it corresponds to a CCEL 1 or CZIP level 1. So it gives you a view of the schematic of all the levels following the certification and also the vulnerability analysis. As I said before, I wanted to show you an example. So we have the example of the chi charging, wireless chi charging, so it is your phone that you put in the middle of your car and can charge. So you need to be sure that the charge will not corrupt your phone or will not damage your car, of course. So what you can see here is that CZIP level two is the minimum that is requested today for this. Okay, so it means that it's quite vulnerable, not so much. You have no site security, so it's not request. It's not request to have any site security. So, like I said, okay, you have some keys inside, but it is not request, okay. And methodology, okay, le level level one, level two is enough. So, it's very, it's quite a small security that is needed for your product. But is that really what you need? So, it depends what you want to protect again. And in our site in ST, we decided to not follow only the requirement, but to be higher on that, so to be EL6+. Plus. So you cannot go higher than that. We are at the top level on the all certification, okay? So for vulnerability is the most accurate product. For site security, our site is really protected and verified, and the methodology also, we take care about that, about all the process. Okay, so quickly just to show you that we provide the security solution with uh, ST33K, which is our hardware, and different type of solution that can answer to your request. So if you have any question, also you are welcome to come in the ST uh, 
boost uh, all four. OK, just take away. Just one thing, in fact, to take away. There is lots of things to read. But one thing is that you decide what type of security you want to put inside your car. You decide at which level and which time you want to have this security. So this is your decision. OK, thank you very much for your attendance. Uh, do you have any question? We have a few minutes left. So if you want to, OK, no questions? OK, so thank you very much, and have a good day. Bye-bye.